This is the UV grid node. It's the fundamental building block of materials like these. And in this video tutorial series, you'll learn how to build these materials by first learning how to build your own UV grid node. Let's start by having a closer look at the node. It has eight inputs, vector, step correct, width and height, square, offset and offset correct, and random seed. Its four outputs are random color, stepped, standard, and normalized. UV grid is a texture coordinate manipulation node. So if I give it texture coordinates like a UV map, for example, it breaks the UV coordinates into tiles, the size of those tiles dictated by the width and the height inputs here. I can increase and decrease the width and height of the tiles, and the random colors assigned to the tiles change. The stepped vector values increase incrementally depending on the width and height settings. If I break the stepped vector into its separate components with a separate XYZ node, I can view just the X component and see the difference that the width setting makes. A width of 1 will give me a tile size of 1. A width of 0.5, a tile size of 0.5, so half of my available UV map, and so on. And the same is true for the Y component. I can change the height, and the height of these apparent rows increases accordingly. Let me set that back to 1. The standard output provides a tiled set of mini UV maps ranging from 0 to width horizontally and 0 to height vertically. And the normalized vector output is similar to the standard, but the values are normalized to a 0 to 1 range, both horizontally and vertically, regardless of tile size. To better illustrate what these vector outputs do, let me drop in an image texture. I'll select a person's face, which is easy to identify, and follow. It's this gentleman here who is no one. This is a texture from thispersondoesnotexist.com. So I'm not worried about using anyone's personal property or infringing on their rights. This is the original image. If I drive that image with the stepped vector output, you'll see that I get a pixelated image effect. I can control the size of the pixels with my width and height values. And as I do that, you may notice there seems to be an issue in the left and bottom sides of this image. I set it to point 0.1, you'll see it better. In particular, you may notice this white line at the bottom of the image, which is not present in the original image. This happens because for the stepped vector output, the tiles sample the image from their bottom left corner. So in the very bottom of the image, we're getting a little bleed over from the top pixels of the image. In fact, Looking at the image, you can see that the white is coming from the white of the sky here. To force the tiles to sample the image from their center, all we have to do is to turn on Step Correct, and you'll see that that problem goes away immediately. If I use the standard vector output to drive the image texture, you'll see that we are shown the texture from its bottom left corner and as far as the width and height settings allow. So if I set width to 1, I will see all of the image horizontally. If I set width to 0.5, for example, I'll see half of the image horizontally, and the same is true for height and the vertical or Y components. If I set both width and height to 0.1, that makes the tiles of size 0.1, and I'll only see the very bottom left corner of the image. Keep an eye on the bottom left. You'll see that does not change. It gets tiled and repeated all over the UV map. Moving on to the normalized output, you'll see that it's very similar to the standard output in the sense that it provides a set of UV maps. But in this case, our UV maps are normalized, which means that each tile will display all of the image from 0 to 1 in its entirety, both horizontally and vertically. This, however, introduces cases where perhaps the tiles are taller than they are wide, and we get stretching of the image. To remove this stretching, first let me turn off the repeat function of the texture so we can see where the image ends and begins. You'll see for now this makes no difference to us. But if I turn on the square function, you'll see that the normalized output gets adjusted so the image aspect ratio is not altered, regardless of the size of the tile that surrounds it. 
If the height of the tile is larger than the size of the image, it will introduce padding between one tile and the next. And the node will also consider both the width and height inputs and take the smaller of the two. You can see if I increase width to the height, that brings them both to square. If I exceed the height input, it introduces padding to the side. And if the width is smaller than the height input, the padding is introduced at the top. To remove the padding entirely, simply turn off the square function and your image goes back to being stretched to fill the tile size available. Now let's look at the offset function. I'll use a stepped vector output for a pixelated image effect and I'll start to introduce the offset and you'll see immediately what it does. It offsets the rows of tiles horizontally for different stacking arrangements. And you'll notice that the image goes with the tile in this case, and maybe that's not what you want. If you would like to offset the tiles, perhaps to 0.5 for a brick or tile type arrangement, but you want the image to stay in its original position, simply turn on offset correct. You'll see the image goes back to where it was. You can continue to offset the tiles and they will move and update the point from which they sample the image. So the color of the tile will change slightly, but not enough to distort the image. And you can continue to move the tiles without affecting the underlying image at all. Random seed very simply changes the output set of random colors per tile. That's the UV grid node and some of its many functions. Now all that remains is to build it. And here's how we're going to do that. First, we'll build a core version of the UV grid node with its width, height, and random seed functions. We'll use the base version of the grid to build our first materials and do some experiments. And as the materials progress, we'll gradually add features to the node. Features like step correct, which will be the first one, followed by square, and finally offset and offset correct. And that's it for this introductory video. In the next video, the first tutorial of the series, we'll build our prototype UV grid node and use it to create some experimental materials like these. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.